Hello, welcome to the One Organized Mama podcast. My name is Janelle, and I am One Organized Mama. Episode 56, Seven Things You Do Have Time For. Now, friend, let's talk about time for a minute. Time is one of life's, or if not, life's only true equalizer. Think about this for a minute. It doesn't matter who you are, where you live, or how much money you have in your bank account. Time is something that we have very little control over. We don't know how much of it we're given in a lifetime. We can't create more time and we cannot purchase more time. So how are we making the most of our time, our most precious resource on earth? We know this sobering reality, right? But what are we in reality doing with it? We're probably wasting a little too much of it. And I'll be honest, one of my pet peeves that I hear a lot of people say is, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for it. So in this episode, I'm going to go through seven things that you actually do have time for. And I'll walk you through how to figure this out too. But again, back to that little pet peeve, I don't have time for it. No, you don't want to make time for it. Let's be really clear and honest. You do have time for the things that are important to you. Now, what are some of the most common time wasters? And these are all three that I've been 100% guilty of myself. Number one, social media. I mean, it is literally designed to be the greatest time suck ever. I mean, we go into social media as just, I'm just going to spend a little time. Let me see what's going on. And then an hour and a half later, we're fired up or we're maybe even inspired or we've gone through this whole rabbit hole system of stuff that has no application or relevance in our life, right? And maybe even we've spent a little too much time commenting on something that has nothing to do with us. So social media is definitely, definitely one of the biggest time wasters that most of us encounter. Another big time waster is TV. I mean, there is nothing wrong with binge watching your favorite show or having a lazy afternoon to watch three or four of your favorite movies. But I had a conversation with a friend recently and he was saying, we were talking about House Hunters International and I was like, oh my gosh, it's my favorite HGTV show. And so he asked me, he's like, have you noticed uh, how they suck you in? And I was like, well, what do you mean? He said, you can't just watch one episode. He said, not just that show, but like all shows now, when they end an episode, it almost immediately goes right into the next episode. So there's not usually a commercial break. I think back, like back in the old days when I was younger, I think there was a commercial break between shows. So it was almost this natural thing to, all right, we're done watching this, turn off the TV, let's get up and do something else. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And I think, again, it's designed to keep us hooked. So I know I've been guilty of like, I'll just sit down. I just kind of need a little time just to veg. So I'll sit down. I'm like, oh, watch like one episode, which would be 30 minutes or an hour max. And then the next thing I know, I've been sitting there for two or two and a half hours. And then I don't know about you, but if I sit for that long and just kind of veg, I feel blah. It's hard to get motivated again. And I literally have to like peel myself up, turn off the TV, drink some water and try to get going again. So so TV is definitely one of those things that sucks up a lot of our time. Now, the last example that's pretty relatable, pretty common, and again, I think we've all been guilty of, is spending too much time with what I'm calling like toxic activities, toxic people. And I'm not saying like like hardcore bad stuff. I'm saying just things that you've gotten sucked into. Maybe it's a friendship or it's a group of people or it's an activity that you don't even enjoy doing. Maybe you enjoyed this person or activity once upon a time, but you don't 
enjoy it anymore. And you're certainly not getting any value out of it. So again, sometimes we feel this obligation to spend time with people or doing things that don't even matter to us, that aren't even a priority to us. And again, those can be very big time wasters. So just be aware of how you're spending your time as you go through your day and your week. So if you can't tell, I'm so passionate about this. And I've said it before, and I'll probably say it many, many times. I don't want you just to have an organized home. I want you to have an organized life. I don't want you to hyper-focus on your pantry or just one or a few spaces in your home. I want you to make the most of your time. And I want you to do this through a process that I like to call uh, my time management journal. It's something that I created that helps you take everything out of your head and put it onto paper. But I don't just have you write on a blank sheet of paper. In my time management, and it's actually an online course on my website, oneorganizedmama.com, I created what I call time buckets, and there are seven of them. So again, seven different things. So we're going to give you seven things to do, and one's going to be from each time bucket. So what's a time bucket? Well, I wanted, because I'm a professional organizer, a something that was a container. And so I chose buckets because you want, it's something that I want you to divide your time into because we're doing this anyway. Think about all of the different areas of your life. And there are seven areas that I have divided into seven different time buckets. Those time buckets are home, financial, work, family, physical health, social hobby, and quiet time. So if you go on and you take my online course, here's how I have you do it. I have you go through a brainstorming session. Again, get everything out of your head. All of the to-dos, the wants, the goals, the dreams out of your head and onto paper. And I help you organize it into different time buckets. And then from there, we go into weekly planning and then daily planning. But the point of this is to take some control over your time. Granted, we don't and none of us have complete control over our time, but we do have some control over our time. And we can plan our day And for the most part, I know stuff happens, but for the most part, we can have those productive days where we're feeling like we're making some progress in life, where we can go to bed well-rested and not have a million things spinning in our head. So one of my pet peeves, because I'm so passionate about this, is this phrase. I can't stand when people say, I don't have enough time. I'd rather if we said, that's not my priority because really that's what you're saying. If there is something and you're saying, I don't have enough time to do this, what you're really saying is that is not my priority. Because again, sometimes we're making things that shouldn't be our priority, our priority, TV, social media, people and things that really don't add value to our lives. So we can easily turn this around again with daily planning and a little organization. You can do it in your journal. You can do it with a favorite app. I don't care how you do it, but I really encourage you to focus on daily planning because you have more time than you think. And so let's go into seven different uh, time buckets and one thing that you do have time for in each of them. Number one, home. Under your home bucket is all of the are all of the things that you need to get done in your home. So the one thing that you do have time for is decluttering. And if you've heard me say it once, you've heard me say it a million times, use a timer. I don't want you to go in and declutter for four hours. I want you to go in with a timer and declutter for 20 minutes. I want you to pick a space, pick the space that's bugging you the most, set your timer to 20 minutes, take two trash bags, toss the trash, put anything that can be donated into the donation bag. And when the timer dings, walk away, throw out the trash, get a plan for the donations. 
And then you can go back and maybe tidy up the space, make it look more appealing or attractive. But you do have 20 minutes in your day or somewhere in your week to focus on decluttering. Number two, under your financial bucket, you do have time to create a budget. So if you have not created a budget, you need to create a budget. I'll be honest, sometimes I'm my husband and I are really good about this. And then at other times we kind of slack and then we have to get back on it. My favorite, favorite all-time budgeting tool that I've gone back to many times is Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. Dave has a great quote that he is famous for. He says, you've got to get, you've got to tell your money what to do or it will leave. So attributing that, co- that quote to Dave Ramsey. And it's a lot like your time, right? It's like what I just said. You have got to take the control that you do have and tell your time what to do. So you do that through daily planning. Well, you've got to take control of the money you have and tell it what to do. Otherwise, your money starts to tell you what you can and cannot do, right? So you do have time to create a budget. Number three under your work bucket. <clears throat> so again, this is paid and unpaid occupation. And I say that because I know I have a lot of you out there that are stay-at-home moms, and I've been a stay-at-home mom before, and we all know we don't get paid for that. So that's why I've put paid and unpaid occupation because yes, even when you're a working mom, or it doesn't matter how you work, I don't know why we have this debate going out there. But bottom line, being a mom is freaking hard. And so so when it comes to work, whether you are working outside your home, whether you work from your home, or whatever, I want you to create what is called a SMART goal. If you've never heard of a SMART goal, go ahead and Google this term, S-M-A-R-T, SMART goal. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time Sensitive. So how do you apply this to your life? Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Number one, if you work for an organization, so if you have a job outside of your home, you have an employer... I want you to work on something. I want you to create a goal or set a goal for yourself because I mean, I feel like for the most part, I'm going to go on the limb here. I feel like most people want to advance or progress. Maybe you want to make a little bit more money or work towards an advancement or promotion. You can do that by creating a goal. So for instance, I can use an example of about 11 years ago when I had an outside employer there was a different type of job I wanted. It wasn't necessarily a promotion. It did make a little bit more money than what I had been making at the time, but it was just a completely different area. And so what I did when I got hired on, that was always sort of my goal, but there wasn't um, a position open for it yet. So when I got hired on, I just took the job that I was qualified for, and then I always had my eyes set on that position. And so I just made sure that I dressed appropriately. I had a good reputation at work. Um, But then when there was a possible opening coming up, I really got serious about it. So what I did is I found a mentor who was already doing that job. And she was amazing. Actually, I had two of them. They were both amazing. And they gave me um, a lot of tips. And so that I could actually map out a plan to get this job and it actually worked. Um, it worked, (laughs) side note, until budget cuts came. So I was offered a position. And then like a week later, they actually cut the position, which I was like, ouch, which in funny, in a very funny way, let just a few months later, it kind of made me realize like, I need to do something anyways, I'd rather be self employed and start my own business. And I honestly believe that's where the seed was planted. But going back to setting a SMART goal for yourself is take a look at what that job entails. And it's a really smart idea to not act like you're already in the job, but look like you're really serious about it. And sometimes it's a little easier to do this when you work for 
um, an employer because a lot of times employers have benchmarks or certain things that you have to do or qualify for in order to get a promotion or a different position. So study that and then make your goal specific, make it measurable, make it attainable. So make sure it's something that you're actually qualified to get, make it relevant and then time sensitive, like give yourself a goal. I am going to be qualified by this time. Now, if you're self-employed, this sometimes can be a little bit more difficult. So I know for a lot of us who are self-employed, what is one of our goals? Always make more money, right? Like how do we increase revenue in our business? I'm going to give you a very specific way to do this, applying the SMART technique. Again, it has to be specific. It has to be measurable. It has to be attainable. It has to be relevant and time sensitive. So for instance, starting out 2021, I told myself I want to increase revenue by $10,000 for this year. I was doing still, I'm still building this new podcast. I'm doing these online courses. So I wanted it to be specific. So $10,000 measurable. You can measure money attainable. It wasn't like a million dollars, like increasing revenue by $10,000 is definitely something that I can attain starting this new venture in a one year period. It was relevant and it was time sensitive. So I have a time on it. So I uh, this is how I worked it out. I started creating online courses. They are $47 each. So in order to make about $10,000, 47 into 10,000 doesn't come out exactly equal. I did this. I said, okay, what if I sell tw- about 20? So I, for some reason, I pum- bumped it up and said 21. So if I sold 21 courses per month at $47 each, that would bring in an extra revenue of $981 a month, which is $11,844 for the year. So I actually can have a tally. So I actually have a little note where I sort of keep a tally of my goal. So obviously, not hiding anything here, definitely trying to sell these online courses. That's why I talk to them about you guys. So if you want to help me try to make my goal with this extra revenue this year, that would be super awesome. So again, this is how you do it. So don't just say, I want to make more money how much more money do you want to make? You have to be specific. It has to be something that you can measure. It should be attainable. Yeah, it's great to say, you know, I want to make a million dollars a year. Who wouldn't? But it's, is that really attainable? Probably not this year. It has to be relevant. So it's something that I'm doing and time sensitive. Like I have this time pressure. So remember the timer technique. This is why I make you use a timer because there's something about, again, even though we like to waste our time sometimes. We do have this like ticking internal clock in our head always that like we're under this time pressure. So that is how you do a SMART goal. All right, let's move on to number four. This is under the family bucket. I want you to get in the habit of doing a, a check-in with your family. We are just coming off of 2020. <laughs> And I don't care where you were in the world. 2020 was a rough year. And um, even though I feel like when we started lockdowns and quarantines, for some of us, I I will say I've had this conversation with some friends where we're like, this is kind of nice, actually. You know, we're not having to run around like crazy people all the time. And we're sort of finding um, a new normal with our family. And then as it just sort of drug on, and it depends on where you are in the country or the world, you know, unfortunately, we're all in different um, situations with this. Like some of us, our kids are in school, some people's children are still doing distance learning. And it, if there's one thing that we've all had in common, especially when it comes to parents, is that we are just sometimes checked out. And so I think it's important for us to kind of get back in and check in, check in with our kids, check in with our spouses, check in with ourselves. 
and have fun doing this, but definitely make it a priority. Again, this is something that I want you to um, write down in your weekly or daily planning and make time for it. You could do a rotation. You could say one week, it's a check-in for me (laughs) because if you don't give back to you, you don't have a lot to give out to others. And then the next week, you can say, you know what? I'm doing a check-in with my spouse. We're going to do a backyard date night or go for a walk and just make sure, you know, we're good together. Um, And then the next week, we're going to do a family check-in and just maybe do a routine and a family check-in because there's nothing, honestly, my husband hates more than quote unquote, like, hey, can we sit down and chat for a minute? He would rather like, like tweeze his eyelashes. I mean, he hates it, I'll be honest. And so I have to kind of get creative and be like, hey, you want to go for a walk? Or want to run this errand for me and we'll stop by Starbucks. So I have to kind of get creative and with my kids again, so that they don't feel like it's like scary or unwelcoming, we have to kind of do it again, kind of in a fun way. So some of those you could do just doing it at dinner, like make dinner, have everyone sit down, just kind of ask everyone, how's it going? How did, how that project go? Or how are you feeling about soccer starting back up or whatever? Just kind of check in with everybody. And if you're the parent, it's okay to kind of let your kids and your spouse know how you're doing. So feel free to, to, pipe up and speak up for yourself too. It's okay for you to also use your family as a support system. But you can also do it over like game night or maybe like a day trip out somewhere. Now that it's spring out here in the desert, it's a perfect time of year to get in the car and like do a road trip before like it's scorching hot. Okay, number five, physical health buckets. Under this bucket, you do have time for a workout. I freely admit I am the most, I will find an excuse not to work out. I literally will wake up because I wake up pretty early. And when I wake up and I'm like brushing my teeth and I'm like, oh my gosh, listen to the wind outside. There's no way I can go for a walk or a run this morning. Like I am looking for excuses to not work out. And guess what? (laughs) I... I have to be honest with myself. And so what I started doing is I started downloading apps on my phone. So yeah, it might be super windy and cold at, you know, 530 in the morning and dark. And then I start thinking like, what if somebody abducts me in the dark or something? Like I will go through every excuse possible. So if I'm having one of those mornings, I make myself do one of the apps And my three favorite apps I've downloaded on my phone are C25K. This is one that you go outside and it helps you like run, walk. It's a training program to eventually run a 5K. Although I'll be honest, me, not the app, 100% on me. I've actually never run a 5K fully. I've like walked them. Um, The other one is daily yoga. And you can pick like if you're like feeling like I just need 15 minutes of yoga, you can pick it. And then you can say, and I've been getting a lot of stress headaches. So I need something that relieves tension in my neck and shoulders. So you can really specify what type of workout you want to do with yoga. And the other one that I have found recently, I've only used it a few times, but wow, I love it. It's called the butt workout. And it's an app and you can just go through different lower body exercises. Yeah. And I sometimes do like the seven minute video because I have those mornings where I'm that lazy. So anyway, if I can do it, I promise you, you can do it. You do have time to work out. In this day and age, they just make it way too easy for you. And if you have a smart TV, I found on by accident one day, there are a ton of workouts on your smart TV. You just have to type in whatever type of workout you're looking for and it will pop up and then you can do a workout right in front of your TV, but then turn off your TV and go be productive. All right. Number six, under your social hobby bucket, I want you to make a date with a feel good friend or group of friends. Man almighty, is this needed more than ever, especially again, since we've all been socially isolated. I was the one, I did not love the Zoom thing. I 
I just don't. And I especially got those wonderful invites where people were like, oh, let's do like Zoom happy hour. And it was, there was nothing more depressing to me because I am such a social person that I want to be with people. And so I declined all of the like really super cute Zoom happy hours and stuff during quarantine and am super excited to be with people again. So I just... I just encourage you to find some time. Again, this isn't obviously something that you're going to do every day. If you're still in a high risk group or your friend is, you can do a phone call. You can do a anything that just helps you, makes your heart sing. Maybe you have a friend or a group of friends that are just, they just make you laugh until you pee your pants. That's who I want you to make a friend date with. Or if you're in a place where you just need time with that friend that helps you just make your soul sing. You know, those friends that you're just like, dang, they're so positive and affirming and they are so feel good. That's who I want you to make time for. Make time, make a feel good friend date with someone, someone in your life. Okay. The last thing, and I'm super excited about this one. The last thing that I want you to do, and it's focus on your quiet time bucket. So just go with me on this one. This might be a little bit, um, just go with me on this. Okay, quiet time bucket. What the heck is a quiet time bucket? I encourage everybody, and again, I do this through the Time Management Journal online course, I encourage everybody that at least once a week, spend 15 minutes being quiet. And I don't care how you do quiet. I have so many friends that do quiet in so many different ways. Some are like masters at meditation. Some are very devoutly religious um, and they will study the Bible. And I just, I'm super envious of this. And it's something that I really try to implement in my life. I'll be honest, my quiet time usually involves literally just sitting there because I'm just like, I. I need to get motivation. I don't know what to do. So I'll just kind of go somewhere and just kind of sit for a few minutes because I need to get my head together. Um, I wish I was super like good at like meditation or religious devotion, but I'm not. I'm just, sometimes it's just staring at the wall. I'm not going to lie. And sometimes it's one step better. And I combine this with my physical health um, and I just go for a walk. And I have found too that even though it's quiet time, it doesn't mean you have to sit in complete silence. I mean, I'm not asking you to be like a Buddhist monk or something. I'm just kind of telling you, you should have the practice of doing something that just kind of gives your brain a break. And I cannot sit in complete quiet unless it's like I've just, I'm completely overwhelmed. I actually use music. So, and I've I've actually done some research on and through different things and found that like music is actually really good for your brain. And so that's kind of what I do if I just sort of need me time and alone time. I'll just go for a walk and listen to some music or just go do an activity in my home alone and just play some music. And sometimes that's really good for quiet time. But you know what's not good for quiet time? And this is the thing I want you to to focus on and that you do have time for it's, you know what interrupts quiet time? That thing that you haven't done yet. Nothing is worse than sitting there and being like, oh crap, I still need to do X, Y, or Z. So I do want you to make time to do X, Y, or Z. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if you don't do X, Y, or Z, then it's going to interrupt your quiet time moment. So you do have time to get that thing that's been nagging at you, get it done, complete it, get it out of your mind so that when you are doing your quiet time, you can do it without like, hey, remember me, you still haven't called this person, you still haven't done this. And I actually found this out because I was kind of going in a different direction with this the other day when I was writing my outline out. And I was in the shower sort of thinking, and I was like, oh, I keep forgetting to do this. 
And it was the most simplest task ever. It just took me sitting down at my computer, logging into something and changing the settings on something. It was something somebody had asked me to do like two weeks ago. And for some reason, I just kept forgetting and putting it off. I kept forgetting to write it down. And so as I'm writing this outline, I was like, let me get out of the shower and then go and take care of this right now. And the funniest thing, and then it just disappeared and I wasn't stressing about it anymore. So you do have time to take care of those little things that nag at you. They, they nag at you before you fall asleep at night. They nag at you while you're driving your car. And they nag at you when you're in the most inconvenient places and you can't get it done right now and you keep forgetting to, to write it down. So you do have time to get that thing done. Okay? All right. Super fun episode. This is something, again, I am so passionate about. And I just want to thank you again for listening to the One Organized Mama podcast. Please go over to Instagram. It's the only social media network that I'm on for One Organized Mama. Type in One Organized Mama. Hit follow. Definitely follow me over there. It always, I kind of coordinate my weekly posts. I coordinate them with these podcast episodes. And help me with one of my goals in this online course thing. Like I said, I make them as affordable as possible. Go on. I, I, I'm i completely self-taught, so just be kind to me. I had to teach myself how to create these online courses, um, but they are topics that I'm super passionate about. And go to the One Organized Mama website, click on online courses and sign up for one, and you'll learn about time management, decluttering, and different um, other different organizing techniques and skills. And again, thanks for listening, and I will see you next time. 